Hello, beautiful people! Welcome on board to Flight Ride with Kate Johnson. I am your captain, Kate Chibuihe Johnson, and I've just got one question for you. Are you ready to ride with me? If you're ready, then come along! Give us. We need to take it. Give us. Give us. Ciao! Welcome back! Um, on today's ride, we're going to be talking about something very sensitive, something quite personal for me and something quite emotional and um, I'm smiling right now but I don't know if I'm going to smile all through this video because like I said, it's, um, it's, it's, quite, it's quite an emotional topic and we might end up having some tissue works uh, today i'm going to be talking about how i got over my father's death and at the same time i'll talk about how to how to handle grief yeah so like i said in my get to know me tag video i have four siblings and a beautiful mom i know supposed to be wondering oh she didn't talk about her dad yes i didn't talk about him because he is late and that is one of the most life-changing experiences i've ever had and I think one of the things that really makes it so weird when you lose your father or when you lose a, lose a loved one is because of the society in Nigeria. In Nigeria, people want to teach you how to mourn your loved one. So it's usually very, very funny, like the way life's trajectory could change. So I lost my father in 2013. That was January 18th. I don't forget the date. 2013. And um, prior to that, he was sick. So he was sick. He was in the hospital, he went to different hospitals, you know. They kept on saying they were not seeing anything, they are not seeing anything from there. So, you know, bah, 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 you know, bullshit upon bullshit happened and at the end of the day he died. Whew. I was 15 when he died, six days after his death. I turned 16. Yeah. I turned 16, so so it was not funny. Like before my father died, when I see people say they've lost their parents or maybe people say my dad is late or say their mom is late i'm like wow and you're still alive and you're still talking and you're still smiling like if you have the mouth to say it like it, it looks it looks unbearable to me before he died it looks unbearable to me and as much as i know my i and my father's relationship was more like a cat and dog relationship in a lovely way i think i was probably the most disorganized child he had like i was always the one that would break plates would pour water on the rug um like come late <laughs> enter the car late you know i was always that child that was, i was good like i was good in school and all that but when it comes to composure i wasn't really giving him what he wanted as a child and i remember many times he told me you're my daughter i'm not going to allow you to become that kind of person you want to become in the negative way anyway but one thing i loved about my dad was that he really really believed in me like till now there's certain mindsets that i have that my father inculcated in me like my father always made me feel special he always made me feel like if others are here you should be here so i walk with that mindset like when i enter a room i, I know that I, I already have that mindset he gave me that you have to be the best or at least one of the best or one of the good ones you can't be at the bottom you can't even be at the middle so that was kind of relationship we had he i feel like he trained me like a son and not a daughter but then all this clashing sometimes i'm like i don't I cannot say it in spread this, but in my mind I'll be like, what did I do for me? What did I do to you? Like, you know, I always had that kind of relationship where he was always picking on me, picking on me, but now I understand better and I know that he was doing those things so that I can become a better person. And thank God he did them because I might have ended up being a lousy person. Because now when I see lousy persons I'm, and I'm, I'm like, this is what my father saved me from. Back to the story, my father died and before he died, so many bullshit stories were going on people that were saying he was not going to leave he was going to die from the sick bed i i cried i cried to god i did cease to cease fasting for days i was asking god please please like one what i was really begging god was god if even if it's for one more year like just give him one more year heal him and let him live for one more year you can now take him later like that was what i was asking god just one more year that is like one more year 
let's just prove these people wrong this would have said that he's going to die just prove them wrong that was just what i was asking god i prayed and prayed and because i was the available child at the moment so because my other sisters were in school my younger ones were in secondary school so I had, I had just finished secondary school then and i was waiting for admission so i was in the hospital with my mom so my mom was doing the major thing so me i was just doing the running around so i was just praying i was just praying at the end of the day he died the funny thing is that the day he died i I didn't cry. I didn't cry to my shock. Like it was still looking. <sighs> yeah. It was still looking like a dream to me. I was still feeling like no, it's not possible. Like my father, I felt like he was immortal. I was like, ah, it's not possible. Yes, I saw him on the sick bed. I literally saw him die, but I still felt like it was not possible. I felt like something was going to happen, like he was going to resurrect. And <sighs> he did resurrect. For me to be making this video, that means he didn't resurrect. And that really shook me. Like, it shook me that day. I didn't cry. But when I woke up the following day, I realized that it was real. It wasn't a dream. And that was when I started crying. But then I couldn't really cry the way I wanted because I also was the available child at home at the moment. So I needed to be strong for my mother. Like my mother was a shadow of herself. She, when my mom is working, she works like a piece of paper. Like her countenance is like a piece of paper, like a weightless thing. She's just like... So I just knew that I had to be strong because what is worse than losing one parent is losing two parents. It's not a joke. So my mom was dead, like she was shattered, she was battered, she was shattered. So the only thing is that sometimes when visitors are in the parlor, I'll go into the room and I'll cry. And um, I cried, I cried, I cried. I cried this to his burial. I cried. A day before his burial, I cried so much that I was really scared of what I was going to do in the burial day. So my mom, a day to the burial, my mom called us and was like, she told us that she wanted to, she wanted to ask us a favor and she asked us that no matter what, that we should try to hold ourselves at the burial place because the people that rejoiced that his death were coming there so she didn't want us to put on a show for them so on the burial day one thing i really asked god i said god i didn't want to cry when my father's the ambulance carried my father drove in and i saw his poster it was not for the <laughs> It was not funny, it looked so real. And um, but I helped myself so that day I don't know the kind of magical bit of colour my mom gave us, but that bit of colour was really really helpful because all the times I tried to cry, I I I beat that bit of colour. I know how bit of colour is like once you bite it. Once you bite it, like if you, have, if you bite it about, as in how do I put it, like if you bite it now, it will break. But that one, I beat it and beat it and beat it. Like all the times, like when the emotions will surge and I'll feel like busting out, I'll just hold on to that bit of color. So that was all God used to help me throughout that day. And I think subsequent, I still cry, but I didn't feel like I really cried until the day of the Thanksgiving. I went into church and immediately like, I walked into church, I looked at the corner my father liked sitting in and he was not there. That was when reality started dawning that he was really dead. And um, I remember when we came out for Thanksgiving, for like to thank God for the success of the burial, my mother just started singing and at some point everybody was messed up. Like that was the day I wept. Like, 
literally half of the church came outside to hold me because that was the day it dawned on me that this man was really gone. It shook my faith in God because, like I said earlier on, I prayed, I asked God, please. So I began to see God as this mean person or mean God that does what he wants to do, what he feels like doing. It really shook my faith. And anytime I saw myself praying, I was praying from the angle of somebody that just let me shout pray in case he decides to look into it. I was not like praying with that confidence of okay, this is my father, I know he's going to hear me as I'm going as I'm praying. I was just praying as far, okay, let me pray. He might say to look at prayer points, then you know, you know, answer mine. That was how I was doing it then, and it really shook me. It really shook me. Our standard of living dropped because my father was the breadwinner. My mom was working too, but my father was like the main person. So I was standing living job. I remember those days, like any small my mother would tell us, Your dad is no more alive, your dad is no more alive. Like we went from being people that were not used to public transport to being people that it was not even about public transport, we said trekking, like any trekkable distance, you trek it, no car for you, <laughs> no special drop for you, like you trek it. And um food wise, we start managing more, like school fees, all those stuff, like now start budgeting and budgeting and budgeting. Like so many things changed, so many things changed, like we just knew that in fact, summary, the standard of living drops. But one of the funniest things about losing a loved one and one of the funniest experiences I had about losing my dad was how unfair people were. Like, my, like I said, I was 15 and then turned 16 when my father died. And my father had certain religious inclinations. So like, sometimes when I come out and maybe I'm wearing a clothes I was not wearing when my father died, they like, is it because your father is dead? Or maybe you put on an earring, he has a wearing this kind of earring. My father is naturally the kind of person that wouldn't like this length of earring. But then, that is his belief. I have my own belief as a person. He, he, like, people would be like, why are you wearing that kind of earring? When your father was alive, were you wearing it? And I'm like, cut it. Like, I'm no longer as, I'm no longer 15. So you don't expect me at 16 17 18 to be doing what i was doing at 15 for goodness sake like maybe i'll do something that maybe even i and my siblings even my mom like some persons are like that my mother did not even get lean like that she didn't even trim the way they expected like that is befitting of somebody that is mourning her husband like so many things are being said that please if you're watching this video when you see someone grieving take it easy with them it's not a joke it's not a joke. You don't know the kind of mental stress that people go through. It's not a joke. Like, let them be. Let them be. It can mess you up so much that you, be, you begin to act like... Act like someone... Like, I don't know. Act crazy. I remember one experience that I had. I went to buy something in a shop. I saw a little boy there. So, I, I was trying to play with him. Like, I kicked his ball. Like he was playing with a small football, like this children's so football. I just kicked it, like trying to play with him. But like, but like, no, leave me alone. I'll tell my daddy. Immediately he said that thing. I was angry. I was so furious. I feel like, I feel like holding the boy. Like, how dare you mention that? Would you want to tell me you have that and I don't? And I just had to leave that environment at the moment because it's not the boy's fault that I didn't have a daddy. And he was just. Say, saying something from his innocent mind so my point is take it easy on people that are grieving it's not a joke losing a loved one is not a joke and one thing i am going to share now is how i got over my father's death and i believe how someone can um get over the death of a loved one and please this is a disclaimer i'm not i'm not a consultant or a therapist i'm just sharing this from my personal experience this, they're not professional it's applied to my own life do you understand? And some persons have shared it with that's also helped them. And that's the essence of making this video. It could also help you if you are if you are grieving. But this is not a professional advice, okay? So yeah. One of the things that helps me get over my father and I believe can help someone get over grief is acceptance. <laughs> Accept that the person is gone. Like that's one of the things that holds people back in getting over someone they love. Accept it. Like they're not coming back again. If anything, you go and meet them. They're not coming back again. Accept that they are gone. Like, it took me long to accept it. And it was when I accepted it that I now knew that I needed to actually mourn him and get over him. So, accept it. Stop living in denial. It's not going to help. I know it's, people do have different ways of mourning, but try. 
I know it's hard, but try, try so hard. Don't live in denial. As a, don't be saying he's not dead. He's watching me. He's in, yes, probably he's watching you, but accept that the person is gone. The second point is, hmm? decide to move on. Like, decide to move on. At the end of the day, life goes on. So, and I believe that our loved ones, if they are watching us, they would want you to move on. They wouldn't want you to hold on and be crying and crying and crying. I'm not saying you should not cry like, but yeah, I just believe take out your time and cry. But after crying, tell yourself that it's time to move on because at the end of the day, life goes on. If you decide to cry for one year, the person is not coming back. So, okay, just make up your mind that you are going to move on. And number three, which also is related to moving on is don't hold on to certain things. Like maybe he eats in a particular restaurant. You're like, that's the only place I'm going to be eating. You keep taking his clothes, you keep hanging his clothes so you see it, or his or her, like I'm talking about both genders now, or maybe you know that this person likes doing this thing, like stop, stop reminding yourself of what has happened. Yes, where I actually believe that you should hold on to something is the values, the memories, the gifts, like the relationship, the companionship that you people shared, that, that is what I think you should hold on to. Like, for instance, I know there are certain things that my father told us long before he even died that, okay, this kind of thing, I don't want it in my family, I don't want it to be like this. Until now, I still try to obey those things. Yes, I know that I also have my own life and I'm not exactly going to live my life with the entirety of the dictation he gave me and he gave that I am my siblings. But there are values that I dare not joke with. I don't joke with them in honor of my father. And even all the years I suffered to write admission, write um, exam, searching for law, one of the things that made me keep writing was I wanted to make my father proud. I wanted to be a lawyer, but I felt like he even had the desire for, for him to... What is the right English? <laughs> like his desire for me to become a lawyer was... I think it was even greater than my own desire to become a lawyer. So it was one of the things I'm, I'm doing this for you, daddy. I'm doing this for you, daddy. So those, those are the kind of things I think you should hold on. But don't hold on to maybe you now wear his clothes, you now do this, his or her. But I'm just saying this, his, his, because he's my father, yes. So don't keep reminding yourself of things that will trigger that one. Then another point is give it time. Time always heal, heals wounds. Time always heals wounds. But then I'll also tell you that one thing about um, the wound that comes with the loss of a dear one is that the scars are always there. Yeah. I still cry even after eight, nine years, but now I no longer cry with the kind of pain I cry with. I cried with when he died. I cry that I miss him, I love him, I wish he's here, you know? Those are the kind of tears I shed now and maybe tears of joy hey, that I, I cross this line, you know? So that is it. So I think you should just give it time. With time, the pain will go away. The pain, that hurt, that, that void, it will go away. So just give yourself time to heal. But then you have to follow these processes, processes I've mentioned earlier for you to, for the time to actually work because if you don't follow them, you might still, maybe two years, five years later, you might still be messed up like somebody that just was the person today. Then the last but not the least is talk to God. Like, you know, I, I, I was always going to bring in this part. Yes, in as much as I felt like God failed me when my father died, he was still the one that comforted me. And I talked to him. At some point, I was like, God, I'm tired of crying. <laughs> I'm tired of crying. I'm a, I am tired of crying. You just have to comfort me. And he did. Like, it looks like he puts in something. Like, because when you lose a loved one, it looks like a, a large portion of your heart is yanked off. So it looks like God brought in something to fill in that void. Do you understand? Like, that missing towel in the puzzle, it looks like God sent something to fill it up. And that is what God can do. Like, talk to him. Even if you're mad at him, like, talk to him. Like, you kill this person, you better, like, I know God doesn't kill people, per se, but even if you feel like you killed the person, you can tell the person, okay, since you, kill, you can tell him, like, he's your father, talk to him how you want, like, talk to him, tell him, okay, since this person is dead, since you allow this person to die, oh yeah, come and help me, I need to move on, you need to comfort me, and that's the kind of prayer I prayed, and I... I start getting healing and I got comforted. And another thing is that sometimes at the end of the day, you find out that all things work together for good to those that love God and accord according to his purpose. Of course, I would have loved so much that my father would have stayed alive, but sometimes I see the good sides of it. And one of the good sides of it is that he helped me grow up. Like when I see some of my mates that have both parents alive, that have everything going for them, the way they reason and where they are not the same. Guy, I had to enter streets not in the negative sense like i had to grow up we had to grow up not just me i and my siblings we had to grow up like certain things that were not getting again now made us that we knew that okay this man is gone so we have to start doing these things 
we have to help our mom because it's not easy on her to do it alone so sometimes you just see the girl and that's growing up that desire to grow up, that need to grow up, that demand that it places on you to grow up, makes you a better person i'm almost certain that if my father was alive i wouldn't have been the kind of person i am now i just believe that his death made me a better person so when you are grieving over somebody it's also nice that you look at the brighter side of it maybe god wants you to become a certain person and you won't be that kind of person if the person if your loved one is still alive summary i want to tell you something if you focus on the pain of transition you'll miss the purpose likewise grief if you focus on the pain of grief you'll miss the purpose I, I know it's not easy i know it feels like a large portion of your heart has been yanked off with the loss of that person but you have to decide to move on and focus on the brighter side of things life always has a way of making this make sense much later so please today this is me telling you focus on the purpose and not the pain of grief thank you for coming thank you for watching this video please do go to like subscribe share comment please like share this video it could help someone that is grieving after all that's all we are here on earth to do to help each other and you know to be of help and to support each other thank you so much for coming and thank you so much for riding the kids